Today we have two very different keyboards with very different price points, but they both wear the moniker of a gaming keyboard. That is the Corsair K100 and the MSI Vigor GK20. Both of these will be available to purchase using the links in the description down below, but it's about time we ask which one is the most worth it. The Vigor GK20 is definitely on that cheaper end of the spectrum, but has a few features that go beyond your standard no frills keyboard. It's aimed at the kind of budget gamer or someone who's just dipping their toes into the world of PC gaming, but I suppose wants the rainbow aesthetic that goes along with the hobby. Firstly, it is a membrane keyboard, but don't hold that against it too, too much. Of course, it's not got any of the fancy, nice, high response switches, but at this price point, you can obviously see why. That being said, for a membrane keyboard, it really doesn't actually feel that bad to use. It still retains quite a bit of tactile and audible feedback through each keystroke, way more than I expected a membrane keyboard to ever have. The GK20 has a fairly lightweight plastic shell and is usable both flat and raised, but personally, I didn't find it to be the most comfortable device in either configuration, although your mileage may vary. But at least the legs were raisable vertically, meaning that I could move it around my workstation without fear of it buckling over like my hardware was in a drunken stupor. And using the awkward drunken analogy to talk about fluids, the MSI do say that the keyboard is liquid resistant to up to 60 milliliters of splash. That means whatever toxic gamer fluid that you're drinking isn't gonna do too much damage to the keyboard when you inevitably spill it. And since it's got a drainage channel, so all that muck doesn't stay in the keyboard, that makes it easier to protect when you inevitably spill something gross on it and way easier to clean, which is nice because I've seen some of your keyboards out there and they are absolutely minging. Clean your keyboards, all right? It's gross. And continuing with the gaming theme of the board, I don't think it's actually legal anymore to put gaming on a device without it having some form of RGB even if it's the basic RGB that comes on the GK20. It features a fixed rainbow lighting effect that you can switch between steady, breathing, and off. But because those lights are pushing their way through the underlying membrane rubber, the effect you end up with is much more of a pastel aesthetic rather than the brighter colors you might see on other devices. But hey, some people might prefer that vibe. Like I said though, the options being on, off, breathing, the inability to actually change any of the colors means it is pretty basic. And that is a theme that carries throughout the entirety of device. It's basic. It has some basic anti-ghosting on pretty much just the keys that matter. That being where your left hand sits when you're playing games, as well as some, again, very basic multimedia function controls. It's not going to be the fastest or most responsive device you're ever likely to get your hands on, but it's also not something that's advertising itself on the back of giving you a competitive edge in games or hyper fast response times or really high performance keys and utilizing only a USB 2.0, the GK20 very much knows its own lane. But is basic always bad? I don't think so. With its fewer functions, it means that it's only gonna take up one USB slot on your computer, and with its limited RGB lighting, there's no extra software. Some people, I think, are actually going to prefer that plug-and-play, no-frills approach. And for 40 bucks, you can't really ask for much more than that. But what if we bumped up that price to $230? You'd understandably expect a lot more, right? Well, with the Corsair K100, you do get a lot more bang for your buck. Corsair describes the K100 as the centerpiece of your setup. I can't lie, it is a bit of a looker. Obviously the first thing people are likely to notice is that the RGB offerings are a whole lot more in depth. Each key is individually lit and the whole device is surrounded by 44 zones of strip lighting on its three visible sides, casting whatever wonderful lighting sequence you've programmed onto the rest of your workstation. Now those keys, as gorgeous and as well lit as they are, obviously differ a lot to the keys in the previously mentioned GK20, and are in fact the first keys of this type that I've ever used. The model that I've had my hands on utilizes Corsair's own OPX optical mechanical switches. That means rather than relying on a traditional mechanical key, these switches use a beam of infrared light to register actuation. The advantage of this is that the registered key presses are much more precise, can be much more sensitive and has zero debounce, meaning that you can really hammer those buttons as fast as your thumbs and fingers can carry you. Now I must say, the keys on this thing felt so satisfying to use, especially after coming from a membrane keyboard. 
Corsair say that the K100 can deliver inputs up to four times faster than other gaming devices. Now, I'm not sure what gaming devices in specifics they mean, but I can tell you I felt a lot more fluid and responsive after bringing out the K100. It's incredibly responsive and performs exceedingly well through whatever game I put it through or during intense typing sessions where I'm trying to hammer out a script hours before deadlines. But I have two issues. One being that the sensitivity of these keys does play to their impressive response time. It does mean that any tiny tickle that you give the keyboard is going to register a key press. To the point that there were some moments where even just resting my hand on WASD, and d like any real gamer does, sent my Word documents into fits of WASD while I was trying to culminate a thought. But using the included comfy memory foam palm rest does help take some weight off of those keys, and after a few days, I did find I was getting used to that sensitivity. I promise you though, this isn't the second video where I'm blaming an issue on my fat hands, because the other problem that I was getting cannot be solved with a palm rest or reducing the size of your sausage fingers. And that is the ping that comes from the aluminium chassis whenever you're typing on the keyboard. While its shell provides that beautiful, sleek and sturdy exterior, I found that during most keystrokes, with the return key and spacebar being major offenders, the keyboard will talk back to me with a resonating ping. While you can drown this sound out with your gameplay or headphone users won't really be bugged by it, once I noticed it, I found I was hearing it all the time. It's a shame because otherwise this thing feels like a really great high-end piece of kit. But what might be a minor issue really started to grind at me after a few hours, and now I can't really unhear it. And for the price point of this thing, it's not the kind of issue you'd expect to have. And now we get on to all the other bells and whistles that feature on the face of your board. The first being Corsair's IQ control wheel. I kind of thought it seemed like a bit of a weird gimmick at first, but once I got to toying with it a little more, I started to love this little round widget. By default, you can control things like the brightness of your keyboard, switch through applications, scrub through audio tracks, or zoom in on web pages. But if you actually delve into the software and program it yourself, you can get this thing to do pretty much anything you can think of. It's another one of those weird wrinkles on hardware devices that you get more out of it the more you actually put into it. One of my go-tos was that I could dash through video timelines when I was editing in Adobe Premiere, and with a little tweaking, I could even bring the functionality into some of my games. And while it definitely wasn't designed this way, I it was it's just really nice to fiddle with. There's, there's definitely Zoom meetings where I'm looking down just playing with a round thing. It wasn't designed like that. Corsair didn't put that there for that reason, but it's, it's like you get a free fidget toy on top of everything else. But going back to explore this keyboard's extensive functionality, it also features a full side of six macro keys that are not only programmable to whatever macro you desire, but can also function as a mini Elgato Stream Deck, allowing integration with Elgato software and can be mapped to any function inside your streaming software or for controlling your Twitch streams. And considering Stream Deck minis are at least 80 to 90 dollars and these six keys nestled nicely onto the side of your keyboard have much of the same features, I think that streamers and content creators are really going to dig them. I tried them out in some of my personal streams and I actually found that for some instances I preferred those keys over the Stream Deck that sits on the other side of my desk. When I wanted to add some rapid flair they were just a small couple of inches away but they're not close enough to the rest of the keyboard that during frantic moments of gameplay, you're going to accidentally reach over, slap a G key and end your stream. Although to make full use out of all of these features it is going to take up two USB 3.0 ports in the back of your rig with one 2.0 on the keyboard as a pass through. And you will have to install both Corsair's IQ control software and the Elgato Stream Deck software. I know having more programs to run can be frustrating to many users out there, but the saving grace is that both of these programs are thankfully very easy to use and in my experience work together with really no issues. I mean, the payoff being getting even more functionality out of this already really feature rich keyboard, they were installs that I was more than happy to make. But beyond these extra doodads for you to play with, you also get the same dedicated media control keys that have been standard on many of Corsair's previous offerings. Some of them duplicate what you can get the control wheel to do, but having more options at your fingertips has been a welcome bonus and hasn't left the piece feeling too bloated. But does all of this warrant the hefty price point for the Corsair K100? 
I think it might. Going back to the Viga GK20, it's not gonna be a tournament winner. It's not for esports wannabes. It's entry level, but it is a decent game aboard for the budget of around 40 bucks. Giving credit to Corsair's claims, the K100 does truly feel like a centerpiece. It's the most feature rich and probably the best performing keyboard I've ever used and will probably be my daily driver for a good while. Personally, when it comes to keyboards, I prefer the higher end because it's something that you're gonna use for a while. Keyboards are gonna last you a good number of years. So in my mind, it makes sense to invest in something that you're going to really enjoy using for a good while. The strange metallic ping that you get from this thing is, is really annoying, but over the sounds of your game, your music, having your headphones on, you're not going to notice it. And while the keys did take a little while to get used to, once I did actually get to grips with them, I found them really light, really responsive, they're really nice to use. If you choose to invest into the high price point of the K100, it will remain your centerpiece device for some time. It's certainly going to sit comfortably on my workstation for a good, good while. And with all the functionality you get, all the utility, it's high performance, it's really, really satisfying to use. I do think that the K100 really is worth it. But those are my thoughts on these two very different gaming keyboards that are going to attract two very different types of gamer. But if you've used either of them, let me know your experiences in the comments section down below. If you like the sound of either of these keyboards, you can find purchasing links in the description. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, leave a comment, subscribe for more videos like this one, and I will see you next time.